Remember that really shocking, gruesome scene from the boys where Huey's girlfriend Robin got smashed through by A-Train? And do you remember there was nothing left of Robin but her bloody hands and blood smeared all over the floor? Let's teach people how to 3D model that scene, okay? <laughs> okay, let's start with a box. Very simple shape. Let's split it up into four main cut lines. These polygons are what we're going to use to extrude and bevel the fingers. So we're going to extrude and bevel these guys and expand them out. And that's going to be our main fingers. We're going to curve these guys down to give us the shapes of the fingertips. Simple rotation. And let's work on extruding the thumb. Pretty simple technique here. Again, it's all just beveling, extruding, and modifying your polygons and pushing and pulling your verts to give you the shape that we want. Making sure to pay attention to the length of each fingertip. Okay. And then let's start focusing on the overall shape of the back of the hand. So we're gonna curve it and modify them to give us the uh, rounded and curved areas of the palm. Using this next technique, I like to use the FFD or freeform deformation, and it allows you to model and manipulate at a global scale. We're gonna be unhiding and hiding the fingers separately to work on them, making sure to pay attention to the little details, right? So making sure to extend the middle finger because that's what's mostly used. I think that's how evolution works. Let's select those remaining four polygons and let's extrude them. I regularized the edge loop so that gives me a cylindrical shape which I then extrude and that's going to be our wrist and forearms. And this is the base mesh. We're practically done. Okay, let's look at this masterpiece now once I add my turbo smooth. Let's look at it. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> Looks amazing. <laughs> We're working on it, we're working on it, okay? <laughs> it looks horrible though. <laughs> okay, hey man, I'm not a character artist, okay? I do environments and props, so we'll tweak it. We'll work on it piece by piece, all right? It's a little bit too blocky, but it's a cartoon. That's why, that's why I decided to work in that kind of style, okay? So let's fix up the model a bit and let's add some fingertips so it's not too blocky on this guy. Extrude for the tips, clone, so we don't have uh, too much of a headache when we're trying to go back in time. Okay. There we go, there's our wrist. A little bit more outlined compared to the one on the left. Okay. So these minute little changes when you're modifying it, much better. Okay, still missing knuckles, but let's continue. So now we're gonna be working on the detailed cuts and lacerations on the arm. Because we have two sets, I wanna make sure that each cut is unique and uh, different from the other set. So each arm is gonna have its own treatment, but I'm just gonna be showing you guys one workflow here. The pattern that I'm going for is selecting these edges and chamfering them. So you split it up, you have more polygons to work with, and you wanna indent into the flesh. So you get some unique cuts and uh, dissections into the arm. You don't wanna to go too crazy here because remember, you still have to add a turbo smooth, which you guys will see in a few seconds. Once I apply it, each hand will have a, uh, its own unique cuts. Moving on, let's start the finger posing portion. I'm selecting the points and polygons and I'm rotating them in a way where they're much more gnarled out, right? When the rigor mortis sets in, it has a much more interesting pose. Take a look at this. The knuckles here are not pronounced. It's very noodle-like. That's because it's missing segments. So what I have to do is select each individual knuckle segment and I'm gonna add a chamfer to it which will split it in half. And once I apply my turbo smooth back on, it's gonna look much more pronounced. Let's take a look. Okay, there it is. 
and let's continue the posing of the fingers. Okay. okay. Let's go around. That looks pretty good. Let's work on some b -b 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 bones, man. Okay, let's extrude down and I want to make it serrated. We're not going to go for realistic bones here, okay? Uh, it's not going to be totally anatomically correct. I'm not a bone doctor, okay? I'm not a orthodontist, okay? I don't even go to the dead lot. Lucky be quiet. <laughs> but it looks cool. I love it. Let's create some shaders, man. So with this, we're going to use a V-Ray subsurface scattering shader. I'm going to be using um, just a light brown and a light pink to create the fingernails and the skin. Okay, who doesn't love some good fingernails? Comment below if you bite your fingernails. I do. Let's build that skin shader along with the bone shader. The bone shader has a tinge of red because there used to be flesh around it. So we're going to build it that way. And voila, look at that. Skin, fingernails, and bones jutting out. Blood particles. That's the next thing. First, I need to find my P array. It's right there, Alan. There you go. With the P array, I've used this one before. It's a particle array system. I'm going to creatively call it right hand and switch my selection to a paint spray selection. So this is different from your normal selection process where you don't click per polygon. I just hold my left mouse down and I treat it like a spray paint. And now I'm selecting all of the polygons that I want to attach my blood particle to. Okay, So I'm thinking up of what looks pretty interesting where do I want the blood splatters to go uh, on Robin's hands? And why does she not like Billy Joel, according to the lore, right? So this is probably the cause for it. So with those selected, I'm going to modify the amount to about 2,000 plus, 2,200. And resizing all of the attributes, I'm using 2.5 or two, actually two, for my size particles, and 2.5 for my variation. That's a critical component because you don't want all of your meta particles to be the same size, okay? Let's zoom in on this. I don't want my particles to be triangles. I want them to be blobs. Okay, time for the blood shader section. This is disgusting. Um, I wanna start with a base V-Ray material and a base color of dark red that's gonna provide our base diffuse okay i'm gonna bump up my reflection to almost white which will give it a mirror surface and i'm bumping up my subdivisions and turning on fresnel okay mess around with my max depth and manipulate my refraction to a light red, which will turn it translucent. And I'm gonna modify the IOR along with the glossiness to make it a little foggy on the inside. So it's kind of muddy, right? You don't want it to be like strawberry Kool-Aid. It's gotta be a little thick, there's protein inside of the blood. So with that, I'm gonna manipulate the fog color. And I'm just getting that nice shade of pink. I'm going to mess around with the multiplier for the fog as well as the abbey or the aberration and I'm going to be adding a fall off to my refraction. So with my fall off map I'm going to choose a base dark color of red and a very light red color and this is going to give me a good uh, translucency when light is shown on it. I'm gonna switch up my translucency type to a soft water model with a tint of red. And I'm gonna mess around with the thickness of the translucency as well. Okay, looking good so far. Disgusting, but very pretty. 
I'm gonna turn on reflect on backside from my options and we're gonna be adding a bump map to it. So I'm gonna use a noise to give us some detailed bumps and features, right? For the hemoglobin, right? The hobgoblin, green goblin. And that gives you measles. It's not supposed to look like this. We'll work on it, but this is the base starting point. So let's fix our blood on the arms. I'm gonna take a snapshot of the particle. And what that does is it converts it into an edible mesh. I'm gonna apply a pro optimizer on it to calm down the amount of details. I'm gonna change the color of the object so it's a lot more easier for me to see. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a turbo smooth after it. So that's significantly better. Okay, so now what we're going to be working on is the blood on the bones and I'm going to use this technique called kit bashing. So kit bashing is basically when you reuse similar elements, pre-made elements, and you reuse it um, for different parts of your model. So in this case, I'm using the pre-made particles that were created for the arm and I'm repurposing it and placing it on unique and interesting sections on the bone. So the bones also get blood smears on it. This is a pretty good setup. The next step here is to add the smear of blood on the floor. So let's finish this up inside of Photoshop. I brought in the final render along with my AO, my ambient occlusion map. And I'm gonna set the blend mode of my AO to multiply with an opacity of about 35%, which is gonna give me some free shadows from the render. I'm gonna select both those uh, layers and flatten it. And then I'm gonna apply a Gaussian blur to it. I'm gonna call it blur. I'm gonna use an image layer, an image mask on it and use black to brush out the parts that I don't want to be blurred. So the focus is on the hands. And that essentially gives you the final render. This is Robin's severed cartoon hands. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. Comment below if you want any clarifications or if you want to chat about the boys. Always happy to. Thank you for watching this. And if you like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button. And may the universe smile upon you.